Welcome back to part three of our EX11 for Programming 1, CSE 121 for Fall 2020. Part three, we're gonna use a while loop for our rock, paper, scissors so we can keep running it until someone gets two out of three or they get two wins. So we have all our code that's working here and a one-off, so we're gonna throw it in a loop. And first of all, we have to think what's gonna go in a loop. Well, everything's gonna go in a loop here because we want it to rerun and redo an input every time. So every time it goes through, it's gonna still say enter something else because we wanna keep playing until we get to two points. So this will all go inside a loop. But before we do that, we're gonna give ourselves some points here. And just like we did with the dice game, we're just gonna say U point, I'll use a U here, and I'll start off with zero since we're not, nobody has any points yet. And I'll put C point since we were using C pick. So that's the way we did it here with U pick. So we'll do C points equals zero. So these will be our counters that will count up our points. And these will not go in a loop because remember, you don't want to put counters in loops because then they'll keep resetting to zero. And that's not what we want to do. We want to have them add up and keep continuing so we can end. So those are going to be our counters here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to add up points whenever we win. So we're gonna have to look up and see who gets points when they win. And we'll just use an incrementing operator using that plus equals when it's time to win something. So, and we're not gonna do any points with tie, just like with, with the dice game. So whenever somebody wins in here, here's when I win. And at least by going win, lose, and tie, we know that we're gonna put a U points here and a C points here and a nothing at the tie. So even if changing these numbers was a little more confusing, we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna go here under this print statement. So when we win, we're gonna say U points. And notice you can click on the variable here, which is nice. And I'll just say plus equals one. And I didn't put any spaces in here. We could always auto format to put spaces. And then I'm gonna do after we lose, after the print statement, then I'm going to put C points and, it, and it's saying C points. Actually, I should put an S in here. I wanted a point. So C points. So make sure I'll put C points and that's going to be plus equals one. And then we're just going to have to repeat that. So we can just, you know, you, you can just copy the U points and do those and then copy the C points and do those. So every time we win, we're going to get U points and we'll do it for the scissors. So when we win, we'll put the U points and then I'll go up here and I'll copy the C points and I'll copy that. And whenever we lose, C points gets a point. And for the scissors, so that's why the win-lose tie works okay. So no points for the tie. Now it's still gonna output what the score is each time. So each time through this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna output a score of what it is. So we can actually set this up, I think afterwards. So we can set this up after it goes through all the if and else, then it'll print out the score. Because remember, no one's gonna get any point here until we go through all this. So these are all the scenarios. So after this else here, what we'll do is we'll print out, now we have a print statement here. I guess we can, I guess we can use this here. We were using this as a, as a tester, but we could go in here and use this. So instead of C pick down here, what we're gonna do is say, I'm trying to think what the other one said. I can't think now. I guess we're gonna put game over. So I'm gonna do, let's do an F string because we may need to do that. So I'm gonna put F and then I'm gonna put a string and I'm gonna do game over. I'll put it in caps and exclamation point. And then I'll put a dash. And I'm trying to think what to put in here because we're gonna put game over and then it could be computer wins two out of three or you win two out of three. Um, th let's try this. I'm just kind of thinking this on the fly. Let's put a variable in here and we'll put two of three, two out of three, and we'll finish this off. We'll put a period and we'll finish it off. And it's, it's giving us an issue here when we put in our, I don't know why it didn't give us double quotes right away. So there's our quotes. Everything looks okay. Oh, we have an empty thing there. That's why I'm getting a wavy line, but everything else is okay. So we're gonna put something in there. We may use a variable to put in there. I don't know if I did that on my first one. When If somebody gets to two points, we can say either computer wins, or if you know we get to two points, we can say you win. So we could just throw a little saying in there that, that'll go in there. I don't think I did that on the original, but I think that'll be nice. Now, all this is gonna have to happen before we print anything out. So again, we didn't put anything in our while loop yet. And I'm not sure if we should or shouldn't right now. I'm still doing it without the while loop. But what we'll do is we'll put a little if another one. Now this will be different. So this will be just the one like we did with the dice game. And we could even put like a little statement here to say, you know, check for two wins. 
So we'll check to see if there's two wins here, and I could I could do this if if that helps. So it just, it's just kind of breaking it up a little bit visually. So we're checking for two wins. So again, just to look at this again, we put our points up here. Now we're going to keep this outside a loop. All of this is going to go inside a loop. We're just going to highlight it, tab it over, and then put a while loop. And now we're going to put a little if else statement down here to check for wins, just like we did. And if you go back and look at your dice game, if you did your dice game, and we're going to put if, and we're going to say if u points. Now you could just say if u points or c points equals equals two, you could do something and then the game's over, but we can even do separate ones here. We can say if u points equals equals two, then we can make a little variable here that says uh, you win. We'll just call it that. And we could just make it be a string and we're just going to set a value of u win. And then we can either put whichever one we want in here or actually we, we can't do that. Um, let's see. Because we can't put two separate variables in here, we'll have to put, we'll just put winner. How about that? And again, like I said, I didn't plan this one on the first one, but I think this will work out. So we'll put winner. And then what we'll put for this one, if u points, we can say you win. And it'll just say two out of three. I guess that makes sense. And then we're going to do an elif, and we'll do c points. And we'll say if c points equals equals two, then it's going to say computer wins. And it's going to be winner because we're going to basically reuse the same variable because this variable is going to get plugged in there. So it'll say whoever wants. So it'll customize. What it's doing is it's customizing our output here is what it's doing. So, so we're basically reassigning that variable to say computer wins. And it'll say computer wins two out of three. So it says f string empty expression not allowed. Oh, I guess it still has a problem until I put this in here. I got to put winner in here and that'll fix it. It still had an empty variable in here. It didn't like it empty because I had an F string. So now that's okay. So I just didn't have that. So everything looks okay. I'm going to get rid of any extra spaces and everything looks okay. And again, I have to scroll here. I can't show you all the code at one time. Again, just to review, we have our points, we have our input, we have the pick rock, our three scenarios, we have pick paper, three scenarios. And again, make sure these are all LFs. These are all LFs and we don't have an else until it, we don't put in something. And then we have this little thing down here that's another if and LF that's basically to check if somebody has this many points. So after it goes through with this, it's still going to go and check this and say what happens at the end. So it shouldn't give this thing if nobody has the right points. So I think we're okay. I think we're okay here. And this is the final thing that's going to print out at the end of everything. Now, right now, uh, we don't have anything looping, so we're going to try to loop all of this. So I'm going to highlight from line six all the way down here to the very end, and I'm just going to hit my tab key. And it should tab everything over. And right up here, I'll just go on this line here, and I'll just say while. Now I'm getting a wavy line. It doesn't like to be indented unless it knows it's in a while loop or something like that. So I'm just going to say while true. And that makes it an infinite loop. Now. That's kind of a, a, a key for us here, because if we're, it's an infinite loop, we need what? Well, we need something to break it. Did we put in anything to break it yet? No, we, we didn't put anything to break it yet. So that's one thing we have to do down here. So other than just saying you win, I think I did the same thing with the dice game. I forgot to put the break in or something. So down here, once the points gets to two, we want to break it, but we want to break it after we declare this variable. We don't want to break it before because it might not declare the variable. Break it means it's going to break it. So we want to break it after this. So we'll just say break. And then after here, we'll just say break. So it'll break after either one. Either scenario, it'll break and get out of the loop. And this may not be in the loop. So we'll have to double check here because I'm thinking this may not be in the loop. I'm thinking this is going to be at the very end where it's going to say game over after all the loops are done because it's not going to print until the loop's done if you think about it that way and again it's okay to think about this stuff as you're doing it i mean that's how you learn about it you say well should this print statement be in the loop and if you think about it it's really no that means it may be printing multiple times and this statement should only print one time so i think we're going to take this out of the loop that means it'll just go after the while loop is done. So again, the way this code will go, it'll import your random, it'll set these to zero, and then it'll start running through the loop and start doing all this stuff and running through the loop. And then when it's done with the loop, 
it'll print game over and whatever the variable happens to be inside the loop, it'll print that out. Now, obviously we're gonna try it out, see if we have any errors, see if we messed up any of the points or anything like that. And this should run until someone gets to two points. And we do have something here that tells us the score. Or do we? No, <laughs> we didn't do anything that tells us the score. That's actually what we need in the loop. We need something that's giving us a score. This is at the end, but we need another print statement here that's telling us a score because we don't have a score here. So I'm gonna just copy this because we could use this. And I'll just go here and put another print statement. So remember, this is gonna be the one that's telling the score. So luckily before I, I mean, we would have found that out when we tested it, but we don't have anything telling us the score. So what we could do here is we could still use an F string. And I think what we had was something like U and computer. So we could just put actual strings in here. We could just say U, this will all be in a string. And then inside here, we'll put U points. We'll put us first. And you could just put a comma or something. That should be okay. It's just gonna be a string, so that's all right. And then we'll put computer. And, and you, could put, you could put a colon there. That's fine. Remember, this is all inside a string. And then computer, and we'll put a colon. And then we'll put a the curly braces, and we'll put C points. And that should be all we need. Now we need a quote here. We need to finish off our quote. And actually, it doesn't like doing that. It kind of cuts it off, but that's okay. So now we have an F string. This should print at the end of every loop. So that's why this one is inside the loop, because it's going to print every time we run through. Every game, it's going to print this out. And at the end of the match, it'll print this out, which is outside the loop. So hopefully that makes sense. And it'll say U, and it'll just give how many points there are, whatever they are, and computer. And if there's no points, it'll say zero. So we'll see how that works. And again, all we're doing is just adding some stuff at the end here, putting it in a infinite loop, which is while true, because true is always true, unless we break the loop. So we have breaks in here. We're ready to try this out. I'm pretty excited. I've uh, been practicing here <laughs> for the big match. And I know the computer thinks I'm gonna go with R, and I am gonna go with R, so here it goes. Oh, and I won. Uh, rock crushes scissors, and now it's telling me to enter again. Now I could put in some kind of line break or something in the beginning or even after the score here. I could, when it's scoring here, to kind of break it up from the next input. So maybe I'll do that. I'll put a, I'll put a backspace, backspace n, not a forward slash. So backspace n, as long as it's in the quote, that new line character will work. And let me stop it and start it over, even though now I just wrecked my match, but I'm gonna start over here just so it looks better. So I'm gonna start off with R again, see if that works. And I tied, see the computer was on to me that time. And now it looks better with the space in between. That's because of the new line is creating that space in there. And this time I'm gonna go with R. And it's a tie, they knew I was doing that. So I'm gonna go with S. I'll try to shock them with, with scissors. And look at that, it was a good strategy. So now I'm up one nothing after two ties and they're not gonna be expecting a scissors again. And I guess they were. So it's 1-1, one, one, so this this could be it right here. And I'm gonna go with Old Faithful Rock. That's the one I want. I'm not gonna go down losing on paper scissors. If I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna lose on rock. So let's go with rock. And I lost on rock, but hey, I lost on rock. I, I wouldn't wanna lose on anything else. Now they chose paper. So I guess I would have had to choose scissors again. That would have been strange, me going three scissors in a row. Would have been crazy. So it says game over here. Now it didn't show a final score, although that's the only thing I'm seeing here. It says you lose, paper covers rock. It didn't show a final score. And that means, what, well, what does, it, what does it mean? How do we get it to show a final score? Well, it means this print statement can actually go up here maybe not having it after this, because it really doesn't have anything to do with whether you win or computer wins, because this is after getting two points. So actually, this is probably in the wrong space. So let's move this out of here, because it's not really part of that. It's really part of the game. So it should be at the end of all the matches here. And we'll put this here. Now, it's not going to be in this else statement. So we're going to move this out of the else statement. And we will check what happens if we put in something else. But let's just see if this works again. So you know what I forgot to do? <laughs> I forgot to fork this. Um, actually, forget forking it. it. What does it matter now? We just moved everything over and put them while true. So let's let's skip forking it uh, at this point since I forgot to fork it. Um, again, you could fork it at the beginning so you have two files, or if you didn't, I didn't do that either. So that's fine. 
So let's just try it out. So I'm going to start off with scissors. Oh, and they were ready for that. And how about paper? I never go with paper. Oh, not a good one. Let me go back to rock. And they knew that was coming, so I lost 2-0, so that's good. Now it's showing me the score. We're always going to have this line break, and it's always going to separate it from that. So I don't think I need this one. So let me try one more match here. And this time, I'm just going to go with rock. I'm not going to mess around. All right, see? I'm going to go with rock again. Look at that. See? I should have just stuck with rock. And game over. So everything spacing-wise is working, and I just won 2 out of 3. 2-0 uh, was the final score there, and that seems like it's working. So I never forked this, and that was what I was planning to do at the beginning, but that's okay, and I think this works okay. I think I think this worked more simply than it's worked in the past by using a while loop. I mean, I've done it in the past with functions and with continue statements and all these things, but ever since doing the dice game, we can keep it pretty simple, just a while true and just break it when we want to. Now, one thing I'm going to try here, uh, let's try putting in something else like F. And it says, please enter RP or S. And it's saying, U0, computer 0. Let me put in a, a J. And it's saying, please enter RP or S. And it's still saying, so what's happening here? If I don't put in something, it's just going to keep prompting me to put in the right RP or S. And hopefully I should listen to it eventually and do that. And that's exactly how it should work. So that works perfect. It's just keep, it keeps prompting me. It, it, it's telling me you should enter RPRS. It's telling me what the score is, and then it's going back and it's giving me the prompt again, the original prompt. So that works perfect. So now when I go into R, uh, I lost, and I'll go into scissors, and I won, and I'll go to scissors, and it's a tie, I'll do scissors, and I win, and I actually won with scissors that time. So game over, you won two out of three. So maybe I'll just do this the rest of the rest of the morning here. This is this is a lot of fun. But you know, actually, you know, we're learning about random numbers, we're learning about keeping score, we're doing all this, and I know we've been kind of repeating this and reinforcing it, especially with the dice game, because it's very similar to the dice game. But we're also looking at different scenarios here on what happens, and, and even just looking at the end, and, and that's why I don't always plan this out. I, I kind of start with an idea and then I try different things as we're working through it. But this was a perfect example to say, hey, this thing needs to go right after every time you play the game. And then this thing is basically something at the end saying, hey, we just want to check if somebody wins two. And then if somebody wins two, we're going to do this. We're going to print this out at the end. And it'll be outside the loop, so it only goes one time. Even if it was in the loop, I think I think it would still be okay if it was in the loop, because it would still break the loop. I'm sure you could just put this thing inside here and put this inside here. But putting it outside the loop is fine. We might have to adjust that if we used a function, but we're not using functions yet. So I think that works okay. So that's, that's part three of our RPS, and that's all you have to do. So when you're done, just you don't have to save it. You can just share it. And make sure you go down here and copy this one, not this one. You'll copy it here, or you can copy it up here, and then you'll just go back to My Warren. So when you go to Coursework, you're going to go down to Unit 9 and click on this. And just add a comment, insert link, paste it in here, and just choose New Window. Hit OK. And remember, I didn't fork it, so we only have one, one that's in here. And I'll just save it. And that's all you have to do. So that's rock, paper, scissors, and you're done with exercise 11.